The New People's Progressive Party Civic Administration is wasting no time in ensuring the needs of all citizens are met. As such, Minister of Amerindian Affairs, Honorable Pauline Sukai, has reiterated the government's commitment to improving the lives of the indigenous peoples through enterprise, entrepreneurship and job opportunities. Minister Sukai on Saturday announced that the new PPPC government will be re-establishing the Community Support Officers Program. This is an initiative aimed at developing young Amerindians in the various villages and communities through the creation of job opportunities, building capacity, and strengthening individual interests and skills. Speaking at a virtual media briefing, Minister Sukai said the Amerindian communities can expect the program to get back on track by the end of the year. Given the COVID restrictions, Minister Sakai explained that specific areas will be targeted in the initial stages of the program. So we will see before the end of the year attention being paid to um, prepare villages to um, get back on track with the engagement of young people um, to support community development. The CSO's engagement was launched in 2014 under the Youth Entrepreneurship and Apprenticeship Program. It targeted some 2,000 individuals between the ages of 16 to 40 in Regions 1, 7, 8 and 9. YEAP was part of the then PPPC government's commitment to youth development and advancement and investment in the lives of the Indigenous people. The reintroduction of this program will replace the Hinterland Employment and Youth Service Program, which was introduced by the former APNU AFC Coalition Administration. When the new PPPC government assumed office earlier this month, it was found that while there were a few successful businesses under the Hayes program, the overall objective of the program was not being realized. There are a few successful entrepreneurial initiatives that have survived, but in the majority, we have found that uh, the ex investment funds invested in this project or through this project has not been a success. Minister Sakai explained that the unit established under this program was not active for the past year. Staff members were reporting to work every day but were not engaged in any work. There was no work plan or approved budget. This unit had no allocation or provision for the unit to continue. But what occurred is that the ministry continued to accept the unit and members of the staff came out every day to work. And uh, it was only in June of this year that uh, the ministry actually got approval for payments to be made to this unit or the staff of this unit um, through the tender board approving for them to be paid under the line item in the budget which is referred to as other. Minister Sukai also highlighted the government's plan to meet with Amerindian leaders sub-regionally within the next four months. According to the minister, the PPPC administration is committed to convening the National Tushaus Conference within its first month in office to engage the leaders on plans for development of Guyana's First Peoples. The minister related that a planned schedule will be developed with COVID-19 preventative guidelines to ensure the safety of all. The ministry is also preparing an alternative approach to have the NCT closer to the end of the year, However, this will depend on the country's ability to flatten the curve. We, we are looking at it in a two-pronged way because we need to um, ensure that uh, there's full engagement on how the government proceed with the intervention for their development. The National Tushaus Council is a semi-autonomous body comprising all Tushaus in Guyana. It has an executive committee including one Tushau from each of the 10 administrative regions. Each year, the body organizes a national conference, which brings together the leaders of over 212 indigenous villages in all of the 10 administrative regions. The forum is aimed at consolidating and expanding the national development and transformation processes to cater to the needs of the indigenous peoples. It also addresses issues such as land titles, demarcations, education, health, social services, security, and infrastructure.